Welcome to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. Working in this uh, this series all year, talking about um, the born again life, talking about the transformational life, Amen. And and our theme scriptures in Romans twelve and two. If you haven't heard it, you know it's probably ringing in your ears if you've been here once or twice this year. But it's it's uh, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And I mean, you know, that copy the behavior and customs of the world. If you look around this world, if you look around on TV, if you look around on YouTube or Facebook, whatever, you see so many people copying each other. They look just like, you know, you see one girl is just like the same, you know, guys, I mean, everybody's copying each other based upon what they see. And, and God said, look, I understand that because, we, you know, we're, we're, we're because we were created in the image of God, hallelujah, we are you know, we, we, we're supposed to copy him and, and disconnect it from him. We're trying to copy because it's in us to want to be like. We should want to be like God. So we've been dealing with this transformational, transformational process, this born again process that happens when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. If people are not saying to you there's something different about you, you're missing the transformation. No one will ever confuse a butterfly with a caterpillar. Because a, a, a caterpillar has gone to a, through a transformational process. Within that transformational process that we are going through, uh, you know, it, it involves love. It has to involve love. Uh, as God is transforming, he's also uh, educating us, because it says, then you will learn. He's educating us about the two uh, most important commandments. Uh, another one of our theme scriptures where Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. He says, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And then it says the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. And so love is a crucial part of the transformational process. Loving God and loving our neighbors. Well, first, loving God, loving ourselves. And then loving our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. And so what we did was as we uh, going through this year, we've been building blocks, building, building, building. But but if you if this is your first time here, uh, you know, we try to make the sermons as though you, you've been here all year long and you and, and make it so you can understand even if you haven't been here all, all, all year long. But there's a scripture in Second Peter. That begins to tell us how to get to the love that God wants us to have, how to keep building uh, on this transformational process. And I'm not going to read all of 2 Peter, but if you go into 2 Peter chapter 1 and you read these scriptures, it says, if you do these things, you will never fall. In some uh, versions of the, of, the, uh, of the Bible, it says, if you do these things, you will never fail. And, and 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 that's the key. I don't know about anybody else, but you know, we we need to get tired of falling. You know, we 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 should get so you know sick and tired of ourselves that we want to get into that word and find out, okay, what tripped me up? What? How did the devil trip me up? How do you know? And and that's what this word is all about because. It, it, it begins to talk about adding, if you, if, if you add this to this, and this to this, and this to this. And so it's building a wall. We're building a strong wall. And so uh, in, 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 the, in the scriptures that I'm going to read here, it says, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. And so we started out 
uh, you know, we, you know, of course, the Bible says without faith is impossible to please God. Faith is word of God, knowledge used and applied in my life. So we start out with faith. We start out with believing word. We start out with believing uh, who Jesus is, that he died for our sins, that he was resurrected with all power and he sits on the right hand of the father. OK, so we start with that. We build our faith on on that, but it's not enough. Uh, we got and, and, and not because Pastor Hicks says it's not enough, because the word of God says it's not enough. And in the King James, it says add. I'm li I, I, I like the New Living Translation, but supplement and add is the same thing. So it says supplement your faith or add to your faith a generous provision of moral excellence. And so we went we, we spent some weeks going over moral excellence. What does that mean? What does the Bible say about that? And then it says and, and, and adding to your moral excellence, you add knowledge. And we look at some of the scriptures that said, and we know. Right. So, you know, you go in the Bible and you can, you can go in your concordance, you can go on your Google phone. Give me the scriptures that says, and we know. Those are the scriptures we're supposed to know. Because it says, and we know. Right. So, I mean, there's a, you know, we're supposed to know it all. But th those are some important scriptures. And then it says, and knowledge, right? Add, add to knowledge self-control. And that's where we are right now. And we're taking our time with this because uh, self-control, right, is, 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 is different from the world's version of self-control, right? Uh, and, 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 and that's what those, 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 that song and that, you know, the slide, I mean, the, um, the video that we watch, you know, without you. Self-control in the world is exactly, you know, how it sounds. Self. Self-control. It's you doing it. Okay, well, that's not, that's not what the world, I mean, what the world is talking about is not uh, the self-control that uh, the Bible is talking about, right? Because, it, you know, the Bible is always wanting us to look to, rely on, on God. And so last week we, we, we went over self-control and here's a couple of scriptures that we, we were familiar with. The first one was, or we got familiar with, was Proverbs 25 and 28. Word of God says, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. Now, I, I, I didn't get that last week, but I, it, it just came to me when we're talking about building. Add to this, add to this, like bricks, building, building. And so we're building walls. Without the self-control, it's like a city with broken down walls or spiritually you have broken down walls. And the reason we build walls is to keep the enemy out. And so if you are lacking pieces of your wall, then there is, there is a way for the enemy to get in. And so we got to understand that. And, 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 and one of the scriptures, it's not here today, but, uh, but it was talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And, one of the, and, and, and the Holy Spirit produces the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And one of the aspects of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. So now we understand that, that, that spiritually, right, there's a world version of self-control, but then there's a spiritually produced version of self-control that you can only get by, 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 by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because when you do, then the, there's a gift of the Holy Spirit, right? That's part of the plan. It's not something you have to work for. It's not something you got to ask somebody. That we, no, you, you, re, it says receive. And we're going to look at that. Receive the Holy Spirit. You have, to, you have to be receptive to it. Amen? And so it's produced. Uh, the Word of God says here, in Galatians 5 and 16, the word of God says, so, so I say, let, remember, just like I said, let God transform you. It says, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Let, it's not going to make you, it's not going to force himself on you. You have to let him when you receive him, then you let him guide your lives. And then it says, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves, right? The sinful nature, when you, when you do the things that the sinful nature 
craves, you're out of control. You're out of control. As a Christian, you're out of control. In the world, you might think you're under control because I'm doing what I want to do. Oh, no, 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 I'm making this happen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So, so we got to get it fixed in our mind. How we did self-control in the world is different. It's different in the kingdom of God. Because that's where we are. We're, we're, we're in the kingdom of God right now. Hallelujah. So it's different. It's different. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 14, for all who are led by the spirit of God, are children of God. And all who are not, there's somebody, I heard somebody, hey, I just follow it, <laughs> follow it right along. Hey, Amen. Somebody, I heard somebody. I mean, sometimes you, I mean, like the Bible doesn't say you're not. Well, the Bible says who is, and if you're not, you're not. And so we, 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 we looked at lack of commitment, lack of commitment, lack, I'm sorry, lack of contentment. Point number two, lack of contentment weakens our self-control. We went over that uh, 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 a lot last week. If you are not content, if you allow the devil to mess with your contentment, and here's the funny thing is, I don't care where you are, I don't care who you are, I don't care how much you have, the devil's going to mess with your contentment. You, get with, you come up with a brand new car, right? And then somebody come drive by with something more expensive, you're like, oh. I want to mess with your contentment. You was fine until you saw that. Now the devil's saying you should have that. You, you know, you, you should have that. You better, you know, they ain't no better than you are. Yeah. What does that mess with? As we said last week, it messes with the fact that the Bible says in all things give thanks. Your thanks have, your, your thanks to the Lord has dried up. Because you now not, you're not content with what you have. Oh, hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I received that, brother. The Bible says in Second First Timothy six and six: Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. If I'm loving the Lord with all my heart, mind, and, 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 and strength, and, and all my soul, heart, mind, and strength, yeah, and then I'm loving my neighbor as myself. That's true godliness. That's wealth. That, you, you have to, we, we have to understand that there are some things that, that, that you can get uh, from a relationship with Jesus Christ that nobody else in the world can get unless they have that same kind of relationship. And so you are wealthy. You, are, you, got, you have something that no one else can have unless they go the same way you go. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, meekness, faith. Hallelujah. You can't, they can't have that in the world. The world can't have love. The Lord, the world pretends to have love, but it has bootleg love because you can't have love unless you have God. The Bible says God is. If you don't have God, you don't have love. What you have is lust. What you have is in and out of whatever it is. One minute you're in it, the next minute you're out. But my word, the Bible says that, uh, uh, that love never fails. Love never gives up. You know, people talking about I ain't in it. What are you talking about? Well, you must never was in it. You must never had it. And if you didn't have God, you didn't. You, you know, and I, I, you know, I always say this, but, you know, there's some people that haven't heard this before. When me and my wife first got married, I didn't love her. I jimmied her. 
I did to her what I thought was okay. I did to her what I thought I, what I heard in the street, what I saw on the Cosby show, what I saw, I, I, what, what, what I gathered to be loved. That's what I did to her. I never opened up the word of God. I never read the Bible. I never tried to apply word to her. I never read what the Bible said about being a husband and what I'm supposed to do. I never had any of that. And because I never had that, I never had love because I didn't have God because I didn't have the word. Who's I'm talking about? Some of content. Hebrews 13 and 5. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. When you understand that God, like God is not like, see, the thing is, we try to attribute human characteristics to God. We try, you know, and again, you know, if you had a, if you had a great father, your great father still can't compare to God. If you had a horrible father, your horrible father is still not your example of God. He said, I am not a man that I would lie. And, and so he said, I will never leave you. I will never, well, you can take that to the bank. Verse six, it says, and, and see, what I mean by that, when I say you take it to the bank, is in this verse six. So we can say with confidence. So when you understand who God is, and who he's not, and what he can do. And, I, I, then, and he said, I can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? I don't know about, you know, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I get in, in a place where um, I know I'm being led by God, but I'm waiting for provision. Anybody been there? Because here, where God guides, he provides. It, 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 oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. If you're living your life according to the word of God, and you know God is telling you to do something. See, it, it's those people that say, you know, God, has to, God told me to do this, and they go and do it. And I'm like, well, I thought you was doing so. Uh, it didn't work out. So, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought you said God told you to do that. Now, either you didn't trust God or you lied on God. If you didn't trust God, then you gave up. It got time, times got hard, times got rough. You weren't willing to wait for the provision. I'm preaching out of experience right now. I've been waiting on provision and I had, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I know what God has told us to do and I'm waiting on provision because where he guides, he provides. If he's guiding me, provision got to be right down the road because he is Jeho Je what is it? Je Je Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I didn't give him that name, that's his name. He is my provider and so if he's guiding me, provision is his job. Provision is his job. I just got to keep walking in the direction that he's walking. You know, I, I've learned that it's like, no, your provision is, is in 2024. You can't handle it in 2023. You don't have everything you need in 2023. The, 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 the finances and the accounting ain't ready in 2023. You got to wait to 2024. And the provision will be there, but you got to wait. And so some folks are like, I ain't uh, this thing, I, I don't, this God thing ain't working for me. I got to go, I got to go and make some stuff happen. I got, you know, when I was in the street, you know, I, woo, I had my hustle on. I got, I got. And where that money at right now? I'll slip through your fingers. Luke, Luke 12 and 15. Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Woo, I got. I'm gonna have to keep going. I'm. I got some stuff I want to share with y'all. Don't let your focus on the tree make you miss the forest. You, you, we so you so tied up in a tree that you you're missing the whole big picture of what God is doing. 
God is doing so much, but you focused on the tree. You let a bill collector upset you, and, 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 and you got a you you got a twenty thousand dollar check on the way, but you got a bill collector ma making you get out of character with God. That's a tree. God bless you. I will have that when I get that. I will pay you when I can. Move on. Say God bless you. Jesus love you, and and do what you can do. Don't lie to him. Don't 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 do it. Just move on. Don't don't let a tree take your Focus off the force. In the King James, self-control is, is, is said to be temperance. You see, temperance. And, and don't get confused by it because temperance is just self-control in the face of temptation. That's what a Christian needs. Because every, every time the devil comes at you, it's going to be in the form of temptation. And so you need self-control in the face of temptation because he, he's not tempting you. He's never going to tempt you to do good. So the devil is always going to tempt you to do evil. If you give in to that, that's always going to lead to sin. And that's why you need self-control that's produced by the Holy Spirit. You don't need self-control produced by your, your, yourself. I, you know, because you know how we get, you know, I, I, can, I can handle it. I can handle it. I know, I know when it gets too hot. I know when it gets too messed up. I know when it gets, you know, you know your friend is a crook. I understand, but I can handle him. <laughs> no, when they come for him, they're coming for you. The thing is you try to... you. <laughs> Reason it out. You can't reason it out. You've got to understand what the Bible says is right, what the Bible says is wrong. There's black, there's white, there is no gray. There's right, there's wrong, there is no middle ground. And so we've got to understand something. What I want you to understand as I, as I go over this is that receiving the spirit of God Having the Holy Spirit within us, having God's Spirit within us is not something new that came in the New Testament. It was the original design. But understand, the Holy Spirit will not dwell, somebody help me, in an unclean temple, in an unclean vessel. So if, if, if sin is present, the Holy Spirit is like, okay, well, I'll see you later. I mean, if that, if, if, you know, and, I mean, and, and, and when I say present, I mean the sin is living in your life. It's living in your life. You got sin on your calendar. I'm going to do this thing on the 10th. <laughs> oh, look at Genesis 2 and 7. Then the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground, he breathed the breath of life into the man's nostril, and the man became a living person. That breath of life was the Holy Spirit. How do I know that? Because we are born again through the, through, through the Holy Spirit. The, the Spirit of God brings life, and for us now, who are going from you know, the man went from, he went from not existing to having life, right? We're going from death in the sight of God to life through the power of the Holy Spirit that comes now on the inside of us, which allows us to be born again. All these terms are in the Word of God. And so, like I said, the Spirit of God was always supposed to be a part of who we are. And so as we, as we look at this, I want you to see something. Uh, as we talked about that contentment, and, 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 and we, we, I talked about it a lot with scriptures, but I want to give you an example in that this week. The Bible says the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? 
I mean, that's it. You, you got to be careful. Point four, do not entertain the devil questioning God's will. Do not entertain the devil questioning God's word. And y'all and, and, and most of y'all entertain it all the time because you go ask somebody, is it a sin if I do this? The fact that you ask it, that means that you know, right? It's, it don't look good. Even if it's not a sin, the fact that you ask it, you know you shouldn't do. But what did the woman say? The woman said, of course we may eat from the fruit, the trees, uh, uh, from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. And then she said uh, uh, in verse in three, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. She has the word. She knows the word. Right? Right? Well, what did the serpent say? You won't die, the serpent replied. You won't die. Now she begins to question the word. And as you, you know, as we continue with that, the, the Bible, the, you know, the, uh, the serpent, he says, God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Boom. What did, she, what did he mess with? So he's now talking to her about, you, you, you ain't going to die. And, and, and if you eat it, you know, you'll be, your eyes are going to be open. You're going to be like God. Well, I was fine. I could eat 99.9% .9 of everything in the garden. I could walk with God. I could talk with God. If I had any questions, he would answer my questions. I had the spirit of God on the inside of me. But now the devil is saying, you know what, you... You could, you could be like God. I was content. I was happy. So you got to be, you got to be careful about that because then, but you know, I mean, we know what happened. I'm not going to go with all that, but they lost self control, which was to be controlled by the Spirit, and they began to do what they wanted to do. So they had now the, the first example of self-control of the world as opposed to doing what God, let, letting your actions be controlled by the word of God. The word already said, no, you can't eat it. I don't care how great a picture it's painted, it cannot supersede the word of God. I don't care if the laws change. I don't care if everybody's doing it. I don't care if, the, if, if you know, if, if the United States, the government, whatever it is, it cannot paint a picture to make you do it and go against the word of God. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And so I wonder, so, so, so that's how, you know, that, that, that's how we got into the predicament that we're in right now, right? Hallelujah. Not having the spirit of God. Hallelujah. And then now receiving the spirit, but understanding how we're supposed to be led by it. And so, you know, here comes Jesus in the, in the, in the New Testament, right? He's born, uh, you know, gets to be 30 years old, gets to start his ministry. And lo and behold, he goes to be baptized by his cousin John. And, and, and then the, the Holy Spirit comes down like a dove. Fills him with the Spirit of God. Let's go to Matthew 4. Those who, those who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. Right? Matthew 4 and 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. Why would God, why would the Holy Spirit want Jesus to be tempted. Jesus is the example. Jesus came down here to show us how to do it. How to be filled with the Spirit. 
right? Spirit of God and resist the temptations of the devil. So spirit's like, okay, man, let's do this. Hallelujah. You ready for your ministry? You have now received me. Let's go, let's go, let's go see what this devil can do. So it says for 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. Then the Bible says in verse 3, he says, during that, that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Now look, I, you know, there, there is no recipe in this world to turn for, for, for bread to be made out of stone. It's no recipe. It, 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 man can't do it. And that's why he told him, but God can do it. And Jesus could have done it if he wanted to do it. He was hungry. He tested them with one of the, that's why we fast, right? Because that's, that's the first thing you're going to get hit with. Right, that's the first thing he hit him with. And so Jesus said, no, the scriptures say, did y'all see that? Anytime you want to defeat the devil, you've got to say the scriptures say. It's not about self-control. It's being controlled by the spirit of God, whose number one job is to bring back to your remembrance the things that Jesus said. Everything Jesus said is the word of God. So it says, he said, the scripture says, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We know that there, we know that there are two other uh, examples, but I wanted to give you that example because I wanted you to understand that that's, that's the control that we have to have in this world. We must confidently use the word and allow ourselves to use the self-control that's produced by the Spirit. If you're using the word, you're using the self-control produced by the Spirit. Young man, he's not here today. He said when he was, he was working, uh, uh, somebody said something to him negatively, at, which, which could have allowed him to go negatively with them. He was talking to us on Bible study, but he said he told the man, God bless you. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus love you. God bless you. Have a night. The, 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 the enemy does not know how to respond when you respond according to the word of God. He said, I heard you, I heard pastors say that we're supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves. You gotta understand something. It might not seem, it might not seem right, but when but understand when we're being led by the spirit, we have to listen. Hey, anytime you're being led by the Spirit of God, listen. Listen, because the Spirit is going to give you word. The Spirit is going to give you the way out. Self-control in the face of temptation. And here's the funny thing. The, uh, the Bible says it, and, and, and you guys can look it up, but it says that, you know, that, that, that God doesn't tempt us. And he doesn't even let us be tempted over what we can bear. So he's never going to give you a tempt. He's never not going to give you. He's never going to allow. No, God doesn't tempt. He's never going to allow the devil to tempt you in a manner that you can't, that, that's going to be too much for you to handle. So those folks are going to oh, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. He can't. He can't make you do it because... God is not even going to allow a temptation that you can't bear to come to you. So, so that's, that's a good thing. But then he said with every temptation, he's going to have a way of escape. And so now you've got to use the self-control that you got from the Holy Spirit to then find the door that God let open for you to get out. See, this thing is fixed. God has fixed this thing so that he, if you don't want to fall, if you don't want to fail, you don't have to. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. I love this. We always love this. Thing. Y'all know one of my favorite scriptures. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. 
But I will reply, this is Jesus talking, I never knew you. Get away from me, who, you who break God's laws. Now understand something. He said many will say we. So if you take the many and just make it one, they're going to say I. It's I think. I did this. I did that. I did the other in your name. But to see, the thing is, you're taking credit. You're taking credit uh, uh, and, and, and you're de denying God's power in your life. You're taking credit. I did this. I did that. I did the other in your name. Let me in. And, 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 and Jesus is like, look, when I was here on the earth, I said, I'm only here to do the will of my father. So how did you, how are you doing stuff? And anytime you want to take Jesus' credit, he, I mean, the, the God's credit, Jesus is saying, I don't know you. I ain't never known you. Because I never did that, so how are you doing that in my name when I didn't do it? He never took the credit for the things that he did. He always looked to the Father. He always said, it's to glorify the Father. But you're going around talking about, I did this and I did that and I did this in your name. No, you didn't. God used you. But he didn't use you so you could take the credit. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Self-control, where am I? Let me get this out. I have to get this out. It's Mother's Day next week. My wife's speaking. Look at Matthew 26 and 33. Peter declared, even if everyone, even if everyone else deserts you, y'all see the statement, I will never desert you. I. Y'all see the I? So I statements. I. You start talking about what you what it is you gonna do. Jesus replied, I'll tell you the truth, Peter. This very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times. That you ever knew me. That you even known me. Let's go to the next one. No, Peter insisted. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. You can't. Our statements have good intentions, but they're not dependent. You got people in the world today talking about, I'm going to be there. What happened? I had to be there. Oh, it was rough. It was rough. I was trying. I, I couldn't. I got you. Let alone that. You told me to give me. Ah, oh, man. I, my money is funny. You, say, I, you can't depend on I statements. Because man is not God. And so you have to, if, 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 if there's something that you want to do, you have to align that with the Spirit. Oh, yeah. You know, Holy Spirit, give me the power. Father, I, I, you know, I, I will be there if I can through the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, you, you, you got to get it off of you. Because Jesus said to him, Simon, Simon. Same thing, that was Peter, Simon. Satan has asked to sift each of you like me. But I pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented, <laughs> that right there lets you know your faith is. I pray that your faith is not going to fail, but your faith is going to fail. Because he said, we, so when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brother. See, that right there would have been a light for me. It was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why, why, why am I going to need to repent? Because you're going to mess up and you're going to fall. Because your faith is going to fail you. But I'm praying, I'm praying that it's not going to fail you. But this is what Satan wants to do to you. But if, 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 you, if you don't understand that it's, it's not you and it's going to have to be the Holy Spirit, your faith is going to fail. Because if, if you know, this is Jesus talking to Peter, right? Y'all got to get to it. He said, 
I know the devil wants to sift you. He asks permission. I'm not saying I'm going to stop the devil from doing it. I'm letting you know that it's a faith issue. It's your faith issue. And I'm praying, Jesus is, can y'all get this? Jesus is praying for him. He says, I'm praying for you that your faith don't fail. That in the midst of everything that you're going through, you don't give up, cave in, and quit on God. That's a, that's a word right there. Jesus is praying for you that you don't give up, cave in, and quit. That you don't lose faith in him. Woo! You got to go through. Peter had to go through, and Jesus is right there. You got to go through. Jesus is not going to wipe his hand and, 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 and stop the devil from coming to you. He's like, I've given you the word to defeat anything the devil can come at you with. And then the greater is he that's in you, that's, he, that's in the world. You got the power. Oh, Lord, where am I? Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you and even to die with you. This is another version of the same thing that we read. And we know Peter, you know, Jesus said, look, in three days, in three, I mean, I'm sorry, tonight, you're going to deny me three times. Let's go on to the next scripture. We, 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 we already saw a version of this already. Let's go on to the next one. Amen. But look at this point, point, point number six. The devil sits us looking for things we're trying to handle by ourselves. Anything you're trying to handle by yourself without prayer, without asking God for wisdom, I, I, you, and you're trying to do it on your own, the devil's like, yeah, that's, that's who I want right there. I want that one. I want that. Because they think it's too little. Oh, I don't need to bother God with this. This, this, is, this is one of the little things I can do on my own. That's the, and those be the main things. You're like, how did I mess this up? This was a little thing. This, was, this wasn't even nothing big. The devil saw you trying to do it without God. You didn't ask God for help. You didn't ask God for wisdom. You didn't even ask God to guide you as you talk to people. As you, you know, I mean, it, it, this, this thing is supposed to, you know, we're supposed to, God want to walk with us, talk with us. We want, he want to be included in everything that we say, everything that we do. He want to be in every aspect of our lives. You can't put, what they say, don't put baby in the corner. You can't put God in the corner. You can't put God on the side and say, I'm going to do this. God, you just, you just rest over here. I got this. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go quick on this one. John 2019. That Sunday evening, I want you to see something. Because Jesus has, Jesus has died on the cross for our sins, buried, resurrected on the third day. Peter is denying Jesus. Everybody else running. They hiding. They scared. Right? Remember, if you, if you have faith, you don't have fear. If you have fear, you don't have faith. Peter's faith has failed him, gone, and, and, and he and, and ain't coming back right now. But then the Bible says that Sunday morning, the disciples were missing, or, I'm sorry, were meeting behind the locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Then the Bible says, again, he said, peace with, be with you. As the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. And then this last verse, I, I mean, I, I, verse 22, says, then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. See, I know what you're missing. I know why you're afraid. I know why you're in here trying to handle stuff by yourself, hiding in, in, in the booth in the back in the corner in the dark. You're afraid, but let me give you some, 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 some something to help you with this, your, 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 your self-control. Let, let me give you some Holy Spirit. Let me, let me, let me, the Holy Spirit hasn't come for everybody yet, right? We, this is before Acts 1 and 8. Holy Spirit hasn't come. So he said, let me give you a little bit. He breathed on them, Holy Spirit got in them, and then they, they're like, okay, 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 I can handle this. I, I can be led by the word now. I the Holy Spirit was needed. 
to stop them from hiding, to stop them from being afraid. See, if, if fear is creeping into your life, it's because you, 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 you have not continued to keep yourself filled with the Spirit of God. Once you are filled with, 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 with who God is and, and, and what he can do and what he has done, once you, once you keep that and keep yourself filled with that, what, was, what can man do to me? He can't do nothing to me. Acts 1 and 8, what I said. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. They had Holy Spirit, but they only had, I think it's pronounced exousia. They only had the spirit that came from Jesus. But, but Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes down in the world, that's dunamis. That ain't going nowhere. It's going to stay with you. Long as you, long, long, long as you don't want sin in your life, you can have Holy Spirit. But if you want sin, you can't have Holy Spirit. But he's available to each and every one of us, and we ain't got to wait no more for Jesus to breathe on us. So you got to understand something, and it's something that, I, that, that, that the Lord re revealed to me in point seven. Power to be a witness for Jesus gives you self-control to, to do anything else. As long as I understand now, I have power to be a witness, to live right, to talk right in every aspect of my life, to do right in every aspect. It doesn't matter what I'm doing, it, you know, whether I'm an astronaut or, or I'm cleaning up trash, I got power to be a witness and I got power to do whatever I'm doing. I see that that power gives you the self-control to, to, to work. Because the Bible says, work as though you're working for the Lord. I can deal with a boss that gets on my nerve. I can deal with, hallelujah, uh, 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 people that want to tell me to do something that, 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 that ain't in my job description. I can, I can deal with uh, 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 living right. I can deal with doing a job that I think is beneath me in order to feed my family. I can deal with all of that. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so we saw, we saw, oh, hallelujah. I'm about to finish. I think I'm going to finish with this. But we saw with Peter and they was, they was, they was hiding, right? Jesus came, they was hiding. And they was, I don't know Jesus. I don't know who he's talking about. He was denied him three times, right? Because he didn't have the power of the Spirit in him. They took Jesus away. Holy Spirit went with Jesus. And, and, here, go, and here go Peter and them. They're afraid because they don't have what they need. They don't have the power inside of them. But when the Holy Spirit came, right, and they was filled with the Holy Spirit, look at, look at, and they're going to talk about that more on, on, on Pentecost Day, Sunday. Uh, Acts 4 and 17. The Bible says they got caught talking about Jesus. They got caught talking about Jesus. They got arrested. And they was told them, stop talking about Jesus. And the Bible says here, it says, but to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Now, these are the same people that they was hiding when Jesus found them. They was hiding and afraid of. It says uh, in verse 18, it says, so they called the apostles back in and commanded them never to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. In verse 19, the Bible says, but Peter and John, same Peter that denied Jesus, replied, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? And I said, we cannot stop telling about anything we have seen or heard. And then they said the council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. Because everybody out there was praising God. And see, see, that's the thing is that now when you have Holy Spirit in you, yeah, I'm going to stop. You know, yeah, I'm going to stop. I ain't going to go. When you have Holy Ghost in you, Holy Spirit in you, you have the self-control needed to live for God, to stand for God, to be a witness for God. Hallelujah. And, and look different in this world. The world wants you to believe, hallelujah, that you got to do it all. The, the world wants you to believe that you are weak because you need a religion. You are weak 
because you need God. And, 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 and one of the scriptures, I'm not going to read them, but, but it, it was talking about, look, when I am weak, then I am strong. See, the thing is, when I acknowledge I can't do it, that's when God said, that's where I want you. That's where I want, that's where I want you. See, I've been, I've been trying to stop you, I've been, but you've been going, you, you've been non-stoppable. I want you to get to a point where it's like, there's nothing I can do. God's like, yeah, that, that's, that's what I want you. That's what I want you. Because then you can let me take this off. It's an oxymoron for a Christian to think they can have self-control without the Holy Spirit. Our self-control is by the Holy Spirit. If you do it any other way, you will fail. If you do it any other way, you will fail. Come on, let's praise the Lord. You have been listening to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. We pray that this word takes root in your life.